when you think of a KDE Linux distro, there are probably two categories you think of. Firstly being the third-party distros, the ones you're most likely going to be running. Things like your Fedora KDE, Kubuntu, Manjaro, OpenSUSE, things like this. Distros which ship KDE out of the box. The other category are the first-party distros, which until recently was one thing in the category. That being KDE Neon. This is the first party KDE distro. This is maintained by the KDE project. And people do recommend it. People do talk about it occasionally. Some people do run it, but not that many because whilst it does have up-to-date KDE Plasma packages and all of the dependencies needed to make those up-to-date things work, it is based on Ubuntu LTS. So that means when you start getting towards the end of a cycle, everything else on the distro is going to be very out of date. That includes things like your drivers, so running new hardware on it, if you don't want to go through the big hassle of trying to get drivers working like that, can be a mess. So, especially as gaming becomes more and more of a, you know, valid and popular use case, it doesn't really get that much attention. And then if you either want to show off Linux or show off KDE, if you give them KDE Neon, they're going to start blaming a lot of the problems of an Ubuntu LTS space on KDE itself. Even though the KDE part is entirely up to date, you've got to contend with all the baggage of being based on Ubuntu LTS. And you know what? Even though it's the official KDE distro, you don't even really have KDE members recommending it. Most people I've spoken to talk about distros like Fedora KDE or just Arch Linux or Gen 2. And from about 10 months ago, you may recall a new official KDE distro project called Project Banana, otherwise known as KDE OS. This project has since been renamed to KDE Linux. This is not aiming to replace distros like Fedora, distros like Manjaro, distros like OpenSUSE, or just random distros you might want to install KDE onto, like Arch Linux, for example. Instead, it's meant to... I guess it's meant to supplement them. It's supposed to be a reference implementation of a distro using KDE. It's supposed to show this is KDE in the light the project wants to show it in. This is basically what we want people to see when they think of KDE. And now that is almost here. KDE Linux, a free Linux-based operating system built by KDE. This page is being shared around a bunch the other day, going on news sites, Reddit, other things like that. And you might notice this is on the web archive. The reason for that is the main page has since been, uh, unpublished. So, I think people were sharing this around as if it was entirely ready, as if it was stable, as if it was basically, like, you know, ready to ship out to the users. That's not actually the case, so it has been set back to a draft. However, that doesn't mean it's not pretty close to being something actually viable to use. Now, most of the stuff here is obviously marketing stuff anyway. It's safe, simple, flexible, powerful, all stuff you know about KDE. We don't really need to go over it again here. And most of the important information is going to be on the wiki anyway, but I do want to check the information for nerds, otherwise known as the FAQ. Is this the KDE OS? KDE Linux is the KDE community's idea of a reference implementation OS with Plasma and KDE apps. Though it's designed to be suitable for general use cases, KDE Linux may be less optimized and optimizable for specific uses compared to other operating systems. KDE Linux is not an attempt to discourage people from using them, but rather to raise the quality level of all KDE-centric operating systems. So there are distros out there which don't really package KDE software correctly. It's not difficult to do correctly, but they might not include certain components, might package things weirdly, might package versions in a way that don't really make any sense. And this is supposed to show, this is how we want you to package KDE. If you want to do something different from there, hey, that's fine, it's KDE, you're allowed to do that. 
but this is the baseline you should be aiming for. Now, here's something very important. This isn't a distro like your Fedoras, like your Manjaros, things like that. KDE Linux is an immutable base OS Linux distro created from the Arch Linux packages. Very much like something like SteamOS, for example, it's an immutable distro built from the Arch packages. Yes, it's technically Arch based, but you're not treating it like Arch. KDE Linux leans on System D for a great deal of functionality. Updates are atomic and AB image based with automatic butterfest snapshots for the latest five OS images. All of this is completely standard when we're talking about any image based systems. Only the Wayland session is supported. So yes, KDE with X11 is a thing that's gonna stick around for a long time and for regular distros is gonna probably keep being packaged at least the next couple of years. I wouldn't expect the X11 session to be removed, probably until either late Plasma 6 or the start of Plasma 7. And apps primarily come from Flatpak and Snap. This is also pretty normal for your image-based systems. And for packages not in those formats, Distrobox and Toolbox will be pre-installed. Distrobox is basically a wrapper around things like Docker and Podman, and you can effectively just treat it like a little distro on top of your regular distro, and then install whatever you want from it, and it just saves it into the home directory so it doesn't have to get in the way of the immutableness of the base operating system. You can compile software yourself either into your home directory or on top of the base system using systemd sysx, or of course you have support for your app image files as well, which... There's plenty of stuff as an app image, not as much as I would like. I do actually like app images quite a bit, but you know, it is what it is. One thing not mentioned here, which is getting quite common on these immutable systems, is support for the Nix package manager. SteamOS has this, I know Bazite had it and then it broke it, but I don't think the intention was to break it, and various other ones all have support for that as well. Does it need to be there? No but it is certainly a nice option to have. Now, one thing I've not mentioned is regarding NVIDIA support. So there is this line right here. Who is KDE Linux for? At the moment, only the testing edition is available. The more the sentences describe you, the happier you'll be using it. The one thing of note here is you don't have an NVIDIA GPU that's over six years old. Let's go over to the draft page to see what that is supposed to mean. Why is the proprietary NVIDIA driver not supported? It needs to be loaded as a kernel module. This can't be done at runtime because the base OS is immutable, and it can't be pre-installed because that violates the terms of NVIDIA's license agreement. This is why you will often see distros asking you if you want to use the open drivers or the proprietary drivers. The open drivers, they can pre-install just fine, but if you want to have those proprietary drivers, it needs to be something done during that installation process, downloaded during that process, not just bundled with what you're getting. For NVIDIA GPUs using the Turing architecture, that is the 16XX series and newer, so 16, 20, 30, 40, so on and so forth, the proprietary drivers are not needed anyway, as the open kernel modules which are included do the same thing. So these are post-GSP firmware GPUs. These are GPUs where the open drivers actually have the ability to control the clock of the GPU. That wasn't a thing for a very long time, and that's why the open drivers were really broken for a pretty long period. Because if it can't control the clock, they run at minimum clock. And that's not pleasant. As it is today, the drivers are certainly not perfect, but they're able to be improved and they work pretty well for these modern GPUs. And if you're having issues with the proprietary drivers and you have one of these more modern cards, actually go and try out the open drivers and see if, you know, that kind of fixes your problem. My understanding is people having issues on Wayland are having a considerably better time using the open drivers. Now, jumping over to the wiki, we have both KDE Neon and KDE Linux now. These are both first-party distros coming from the KDE project, both shipping KDE, both shipping up-to-date versions of KDE. Why? 
Why have both of these? KDE Neon was KDE's first version of a self-made OS. It fulfills the distributed by KDE requirement, but fails on the reliability angle due to the Ubuntu LTS base that ironically becomes unstable because it needs to be tinkered with to get Plasma to build on it, breaking the LTS promise. LTS in a full LTS context is fine, minus driver issues and all of the out-of-date software. It makes sense in like a server where you have very specific things that you're trying to keep very up-to-date and then everything else, it's fine to just be security patches. You don't really want feature patches for a lot of additional things. But when we're talking about trying to get very new software working on a very old base, it does come with some drawbacks in needing to mess with what is being shipped. And dealing with all of that old technology, that's a lot of work and isn't really a requirement, isn't really a goal of the KDE Linux project. So it makes a lot more sense to build it off of something that has up-to-date packages, that being Arch Linux, and then not really have to worry about most of those problems. Now, it should be obvious considering I haven't mentioned it yet, but whilst this is based on Arch Linux, it isn't Arch based in the way that you'd get access to something like Pac-Man. It is an immutable system. You are going to have to work with it in an immutable way. You're not just installing random packages onto it. That is not really the goal of what this project is. Now, currently there are some things which don't necessarily work super well. Secure boot, not supported. QA and testing infrastructure needs more thoroughness in automation. KDE apps in flat packs have some paper cuts, especially Dolphin and Console. Not just that, but there are a lot of KDE Plasma applications that have not been put into a flat pack in the first place. And the ones that have been, it feels kind of random what is a flat pack and what is not a flat pack. There's not really any rhyme or reason on what has gone into that format or not. System updates are huge because we ship a whole new image and Delta updates haven't been implemented in System D yet. This is a problem that basically every immutable system suffers from. They are big updates. It's a single thing you install, but they're big updates. And for people on, you know, limited connections, it may not be the most suitable thing to mess around with. Also, because you are limited to using DistroBox, Toolbox, I did mention this before, but Homebrew as well, and compiling things yourself, extending the system with new software is... It makes sense for an enthusiast, right? But for a regular user, it's more awkward. It's not as well documented amongst the whole range of distros out there. There's not as many doing it. And it's going to be a bit of a learning curve to sort of understand that. And considering that one of the goals for this project is sort of presenting it to hardware manufacturers as this is KDE Linux, sell hardware with KDE Linux installed on it, that is a problem that does need to be addressed at some point. I don't know if that's just a matter of getting everything just magically working through Discover or what approach you'd want to take there. This is not currently the case, but in the future, there will be multiple versions. You have the Testing Edition, Enthusiast Edition, and Stable Edition. Testing is basically your nightly build. This is, hey, you want the most up-to-date KDE stuff constantly? Here you go. The Enthusiast, as it says here, the beta version, is your up-to-date, stable, released version. So akin to what you would get packaged on something like Arch Linux, for example. And then the public release, the stable edition, this is your slower moving, but well-tested version. Not as slow as something like a Kubuntu, for example, but enough where you feel stable running it in like a corporate environment. As it currently stands, there is a download page available. Take note of the giant red box. Only the testing edition is available. This is the alpha version. This is the nightly build. It is not really intended for your average user. It's here if you want to use it. Everything you need to know to install it is available. 
production is not the place to be using it, though. Expect problems, expect things to just randomly break, expect some things to just not exist to begin with, because this is not ready for the average person to be using. However, it is definitely on the way to that. Now, if you want to get involved with it, there is the repo as well, the KDE Linux repo. And as you can see here, Nate Graham is involved in it. A bunch of other KDE people are involved in it. This is very much an official KDE project. And honestly, I hope it goes well. So let me know. Do you think we actually need a KDE Linux distro? Do you think this entire thing is kind of just a waste of time? Or do you think there is a good reason to have something directly from the project, not just made for developing KDE, but to ship out to the regular users as well? I'd love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video, go subscribe as well. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... K... D. Yeah.